What is going on guys, today I'm finally making my tutorial on making a earth in Unreal Engine. So I showed a previous video of just sort of a preview of this. Basically what this earth likes to do is you've got the sort of um, atmosphere glow. You've got, when it goes to this side, it will actually turn on the lights and be darker. And you've obviously got like the clouds moving around and the earth spinning. So I'm going to take this video slower than usual because I want to explain to you guys sort of everything that's going on. Let's say a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters. I couldn't be doing this without you guys. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to go to this website. I should put the link in the description, but if I forget, um, you go right there. And basically here, you'll need a few sort of, um, you need a few textures. You'll need Earth without clouds. You'll need Earth at night. And if you explore around here, you'll be able to find the other ones. You've got clouds, which you'll need. Um, you'll need water, I believe, whatever that one is. Oh, you need that one because that'll help you with bump maps. That one, so you can distinguish between what's water and what's not water because water is obviously going to be shiny and the land is not. You can get down as well, but I just kept that with the original. I just got the that uh, that texture where it comes with it. And you're gonna last one you're gonna want is that one, the one that's basically the lights at night, which when downloaded should look like this. Oh, if it lets me drag the whole tab over, there you go. And not that one. It should look like this. The reason you want that is because when you apply your glow map, you're only obviously gonna want the lights to turn on and nothing else. Right. So. Let's get started on how to make this. So first, we're going to put a... Is that a mesh? We're going to want to put an earth in. So you can make this sphere in the engine, or you can make one yourself. I usually like making one myself so I can get as smooth as I like. It's a bit big. In fact, let me just duplicate this one over. Whee! And put a new, a new material on it. And we're going to call this... Uh, v1. Let's throw that on that. So now we have a plain material on there. So the first thing you're going to want to do, like always, is make a material. Call it whatever you want. So, uh, um, uh, got my spelling stays terrible. Material. I'm going to want to just throw that on. Actually, I don't know why I did that. I just made an earth v1 and what we're doing. So yeah, get your earth v1 up. Or whatever you guys want to call it. And I'm going to have on my left monitor, uh, sort of the end result, so it's easier for me to follow. So the first thing you're going to want to do is throw in all your textures. So you want your um, your normal diffuse, your night, your city lights, your normals, your bump, your other normals because it's cloud normals. I believe I made my cloud normals, and to do that, just get the cloud um, out frame. Use either crazy bump or I used quicks or sweet whatever you've got available you can use X normals and you just make some normals of it so throw all of them in and we can start work so if you throw all of these in you can obviously just get us uh, sort of a stationary earth but we want to do lots of things to, it to make it look nice so let's separate all the stuff out so we've got our normals down here got the fuse up here we have our that one. Oh yeah, a specular, which is going to be our water, because obviously, like I said before, the water is going to be shiny and the um, I think it's going to be rough. Got our clouds, which I'm going to pull over here for now, and we're going to leave these at the side until we start putting them in. Right, so the first thing you're going to want to do to earth is you're going to want to basically you want to make basically make it so on one side. You want it to be night, and the other side you want it to be day. And the way I've done this is I've not done it by the way that the light affects it. So uh, it's a very important thing because it can be a slight issue depending on how you want to make it. So if I actually turn this light, I can light up the dark side and it still stays dark. So you have to make sure you're lighting up the right side. Because the way I've done it is I've just made it in the y-axis. One side is the night version and one side is the day version. Right, so let's go back into our earth. So here we are. So first thing we want to do is we want to start sorting out that alpha 
or that mask, should I say. So let's do that. We need to get our, just gotta remember what it's called. Uh, vertex normal WS. Cut it down. We want to mask out the green value, I believe. Component mask. Put that in. And preview. No, nope, that's parameter. Preview. Oh, God. Preview. All right, so that will be. You would the back or front side, I can't remember which one's going to apply, but that would be the back or front side, and that will obviously be, again, the opposite. So now, what we could do here, is we can um, <clears throat> sharpen it up, and the way I sort of do this, is I usually add an add value in, I have a 0.5 value on it, on this menu, so I'll put 0.5, and what that's obviously going to do, is that side's going to be like that, as you can see, that's going to go over one value, and that's going to go sort of 0.5 here. Um, then we want a cheap contrast, and this will allow us to sort of sharpen it up. And we want to set this cheap contrast to like a five, and then we want to clamp it afterwards to make sure the values stay one and zero. Just make sure that's right. I actually, oh, because I kept that at 1, so we want that to be 0.5, my apologies, there we go. Then we want to clamp it to make sure the values are 0 and 1, because if they go above and below that, it could mess up. Clamp that down, and now it'll be 1 and 0 values. <clears throat> Alright, so let's move that over here. Press C, and we can name that our directional mask, dark side mask, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it... Oh, if I click in the box, I'm going to call it directional mask. So this is the first step to being able to divide up sort of our masks. So I'm not going to get that, connect that up yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my clouds. Because the clouds are obviously going to sit on top of your diffuse. And the reason you want them separate is because clouds, obviously, one thing, they stick away from the earth a bit more. And two, they move faster than the Earth rotates. And this is not a real-time speed. Obviously, the Earth does not move this fast. And I might even have the clouds too slow. But you still do want them moving at separate speeds because that's how it will work. So we're going to start setting this up now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a panner. And these, you can have a few panners because obviously it's gonna, the whole Earth is going to pan around. So if we go like that, uh, I'm going to get a bump offset here. I can't remember, these values basically allow it to stick away from the earth a little bit. Um, it goes into coordinates. We have a 0.5 value here. And these are just my settings. You can mess around with them as much as you want. Um, I believe I've changed that as well. 0.3 point. Yep. So we've got a 0.3 in here. 0.45. And then we want to connect this up to our texture. And this will already... Oh, this will already start rotating if it was in real time. It is in real time. Oh, you obviously got to set up the um, how much you want it to pan, which I hadn't done. Um, zero, zero, 008. There you go. Now it's already panning. So that's already clouds, like half done, which is very nice. Okay. Okay. So now we want to connect this up to a clamp. Make sure the value stay between 0 and 1. I don't know why, that should be fine. But I've previously set up to a clamp, so there might have been a reason why I did that. So I'll set it up anyway, you might not actually need that clamp. And oh, and left click, you get your lap. And we'll connect this up to B. And then we want to connect that up to apparently A. Which I'm not sure what it does, but we'll check. So what's connected up? Oh, and then, oh, I see. And then what we want is this mask we made here. I believe so. Yep. We want to connect up to the alpha. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, and then we want to change this 
to 0.02 that's what the clamps for makes it so it can be darker on one side although that's gone very dark overall instead of only on one side let me check why that's done that oh i've connected the clamp up to a and b there we go so now the clouds will start going dark on one side because obviously because the light's hitting them on one side they're going to be brighter so that should be fine now what we need to do is we need to start setting up our diffuse so that should be done for our clouds actually and we can call this uh, cloud alpha whatever you want you can name things whatever you want whatever's easy for you guys all right now we need to set up our diffuse so I've done a few settings for this just to make it look nicer. You don't have to necessarily do these, but I'll do them anyway. So this is just sort of, you could do these in Photoshop, what I'm doing now. So I've got cheap contrast. And then I've got this set to minus 0.2. And like, if I preview that, you'll see, if I preview it here. And then what I, I, I assume I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it together. And if I preview that, you'll see it will sort of make the tones a bit darker. And that's just personal preference. Like I said, you don't have to have them. I just prefer them like that. Let's up a lap here. And now we need to set up our dark side of the earth. So if I grab this one. And this is connected to our panner. So we have a panner that controls the whole thing here. And I'm going to connect that up to, I believe, yep, that goes straight to here, straight to here. And let me just check the speed I got. There will be a lot of me referencing back to how I did it, just so I can um, know some values, because I won't remember them off by heart. Uh, yep, that looks pretty good. Now... I have a clamp here doing nothing apparently. Um, so now I need to multiply this apparently. I don't know why I've done that. Maybe it's because the values are a bit weak. Connect that to um, B. And then I'm assuming the alpha is this one. Alright, and that, what was that alpha again? Start. Alpha. So I've set up, so yeah, we'll see. And then we have to boom, boom. Oh wait, no, my apologies. I've got so many things here that's um, a little bit confusing. That my place is there. That alpha is that one, which is the one I thought was going to be, which is going to be our dark and light side. There you go. That's going to change to the dark side now. That looks too dark, so I'll quickly preview on here and see what that looks like. No, that's what the other one looked like, apparently. Then we set up another lap. With that going into there, we have a two value going into here. And then we have, now we have that going into the alpha. There we go, so now you've got it going over the top. And I believe some of these values is just because originally it didn't cut off very well, so I had to manipulate a little bit to cut off a bit nicer. Now we need one more lap. And what this one does, if I just check it out. Oh, this is going to be in charge of our atmosphere. So, now we're going to have to jump and do the atmosphere. So let's proceed on that. Mm, let's make it a bit organized. Move that there, move that there. Move that here. Call that color, diffuse, albedo, whatever you want to call it. Now we have our lap here, which we're going to use a bit later. Because now we need to set up the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is just simply done by a Fresnel. And if you haven't seen my previous video, what a Fresnel basically does is it will, it's like if I go on a cylinder, it will basically, the direction that the light's sort of hitting it is kind of hard to explain. Um, but basically, as you can see, if I've got like a sear, the edges are going to be affected by the Fresnel. If I've got like a cube, it will only work if I like stay at an angle. So yeah, so we want a Fresnel because we obviously want the edges to be affected by the atmosphere. 
So let me grab the values I'm using. 2.5. If you don't know how to put in a one constant, just hold one and left click. I'm assuming you guys should know that by now. If you've um, been a part of this channel for a little bit. We apparently have a zero in there. Then we need a one minus because it's affecting the wrong way. Oh, you can press O and left click, I believe. Yep. One minus. Then I'll get a lap here. We will get, I will copy this color over. Oh, looks like the color I'm using. There you go. So the color that, that is, we've got 0 0.041, <clears throat> 0 0.266, and 0.545, and we get a nice blue. Then I multiply that by three to make it really stand out. Oh, B value, three. And then I connect that to our A. We have black for there, and we put our one minus from our Fresnel into our alpha. And if we preview that, you'll see we'll have the edges now glowing and the center black. And we're going to use this as an alpha because we don't want the black to come through. So if I come all the way up here, I believe we use it as an alpha anyway. Let me make sure because I think we use it as an alpha and as our A value or something like that. Okay, so we use it as our alpha. Ah, I see, okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. So what we do is the one minus value, we use as the alpha, cut it out, if I don't miss. And this does start to go all over the place. You guys might be able to organize it a bit more than I do, but after finishing, I couldn't get too much organized because it just sort of goes everywhere. Oh, did I click, click the wrong one? One minus value, make sure that's when you select into the alpha. The lerp goes into the A value and then our diffuse, our color, whatever you want to call it, goes into our B. Now if I preview that, you'll get your edge glow. And I believe we could set this into our base color now. So now if I click apply what we got so far, we should just have our base color set up. Come over here. So that's already a big portion already done. We don't have our glow yet. Obviously, that's going to come in a little bit later, but that's a big portion already done. And I'm going to end it there, and we're going to carry on this in our next episode. There's only a few more things we've got to get left done. The next episode should be quite short. It's just normal maps and stuff like that we've got to set up. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, my Patreon will be in the description. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed, and bye-bye.